it is said that you're one sickness away to poverty. I'm sure you have found yourself in a WhatsApp group or even a Harambe to raise fund for a friend's parent or even loved one. Or even you have constituted one to raise funds for your loved one. This is Mula Insider where we are all about personal finance and your relationship with money. My name is Masi Milanoi and this week it's all about how to ensure your parents. Basically, how do you ensure that they have a medical cover when they are old? Remember, if you haven't watched our stories, also log on to www.mula.co.ke and link with us on our social media pages. First, let's take a look at the highlights in business this week. Subscription video on demand service Netflix has begun offering a free mobile plan with about one quarter of its TV shows and movies in Kenya, a strategy aimed at sparking growth for the company. The free plan is available on Android mobile phones and will not have advertisements. It features Netflix movies and TV shows dramas such as Money Haste, Bridgerton and African series Blood and Water plus some of the programming the company licenses from others. Netflix hopes the free plan will lead to users signing up for a paid option with more content. The world's largest streaming video service is looking to add customers outside of more saturated markets, such as the United States, where new subscriber sign-ups have slowed down at a time when competition for online audiences has intensified. Executives remain bullish on the long-term future, noting there are larger markets where streaming television is just starting to take hold. To attract customers in Africa, Netflix is investing in locally made programming such as Queen Solo and Jiva and has partnered with production studios in Nigeria. Africa currently is a relatively small market for streaming TV subscriptions. Digital TV research projects Netflix will lead subscription video on demand services on the continent with 6.26 million paying customers in 2026, followed by Walt Disney's Disney Plus. The free plan started on Tuesday this week. Elsewhere, travelers from Kenya will now be allowed into the United Kingdom after Britain revised its COVID-19 travel list in a fresh boost for tourism, which is currently in its peak season. The UK moved Kenya from its red list to amber along with seven other countries, Egypt, Turkey, Pakistan, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Oman and Bangladesh. Travelers arriving in the UK from countries on the red list are denied entry and returning Britons must submit to 10 days of mandatory quarantine in hotels. UK nationals are barred from traveling to those countries. Kenya was placed in the red list in April following the spread of the highly contagious COVID-19 Delta variant in the country, giving a blow to the tourism sector. The UK has segmented countries into green, amber and red list, each carrying different degrees of restrictions for arrivals back to Britain. People coming from amber list countries quarantine for 10 days at home or place of stay and have to provide evidence of three negative COVID tests, one before returning to the UK, one to two day and another one on day eight. People coming from green list countries do not have to quarantine and have to provide evidence of two negative COVID tests, one before returning to the UK and one on day two. The move of the amber list took effect from 4 a.m. Wednesday, September 2022. Now we're going to start with the word of the day and it's insurance premium, which is the amount of money an individual or business must pay for an insurance policy. Now insurance premiums are paid for policies that cover healthcare, auto, home and life insurance. They can be paid quarterly, monthly or semi-annually depending on the policy. Well, that word will really feature in today's episode. But first, let us take a look at our first story. Now, less than 50,000 elderly people are said to have medical insurance to cover them in their old age. According to Ezekiel Masharia, who's the managing director for Kenbright Holdings Limited, you don't have to wait until sickness knocks on your door to get insurance. This comes as CAC Insurance recently launched medical insurance for the elderly. Take a look. Right now people are doing what we call out of pocket, which means they go to hospital and they do a harambe or they sell some assets. The idea is to now come as a group and see whether they can take care of costs you know, through insurance. Insurance is risk transfer, so you just pull in your funds and use it. 
it is said that you are one hospital bill away from poverty. Unfortunately, it is rare to predict the day and time one will get sick in order to prepare and sometimes we can't control the intensity of sickness. According to Bismuth Insurance, every year 1.5 million Kenyans are pushed into poverty due to medical bills. According to experts, your medical bills get higher as you grow older. When you're between 30 and 40, your cost of care on average is about 15,000 shillings. And when you say 15,000 shillings, it doesn't mean you, it can't be a million shillings. It just means that in a group of 1,000 people, if everybody contributed 15,000 shillings, that would be enough to take care of your inpatient costs. Okay, when you're 60, that number goes to 100,000 on average per year. So that 100,000 is a lot of money for some people. However, it is not all gloom and doom. Now you can insure your parents, your loved ones who are elderly, as insurance companies have begun to offer products targeting the elderly. The market has developed products for people above 60. Uh, some insurance are providing services up to 70 years, some are providing up to 80, uh, depending on the insurer, but yes, it's, it's, it's possible to take up cover. The only problem is beyond the 80, then there's a problem, but from retirement age of 60 to 80, you can get coverage with the top, 10 top, top five insurance companies on, on healthcare. Earlier this month, CIC Insurance launched an insurance product targeting the elderly. It caters for inpatient expenses, outpatient, dental, and optical expenses. The product is enriched to have such features as cancer care and chronic and pre-existing conditions. The problem this product is addressing is the financial risk posed by being unwell. A lot of Kenyans have been impoverished. When they have a sick person or they get unwell, they need to go to hospital and bill runs into millions of shillings and they do not have health insurance. So we have had solutions catering for people up to 60 years, but now we are extending our coverage for people up to 80 years with our seniors plan. Benefit of taking insurance uh, for your parents is very simple, catastrophe, okay? The idea for insurance is pay a fixed amount and you know your, your total exposure in case of an event up to, let's say, a number, maybe a million shillings, you, you, you know that it, you're sorted out. It's not easy for somebody to be told, give, get a million shillings at night. Because remember, healthcare emergencies are emergencies, so they occur when you're not ready. So being told to come up with even a hospital deposit at, in the middle of the night when the banks are, cold, are closed is hard. So that's the first, first support area that insurance does for you is it supports you in the emergency cost at night. Then you can sort, sort out your parent, have them in the best care. Then now you can reorganize yourself within two to three days to look for anything over and above. But that immediate day, the ambulance cost, the first day deposit, if they need ICU costs sorted out day one, that would be the key advantage that that would offer you uh, that you know people will, look, will, will, will be looking into. For instance, APA Insurance, an annual contribution of 42,581, gets you an inpatient coverage of 1 million shillings. A hospital in general wards caters for pre-existing conditions worth 250,000 shillings, inpatient dental worth 40,000 shillings, post-hospitalization treatment worth 20,000 shillings for the first two weeks, reconstructive surgery, but does not cater for treatment outside Kenya. However, a 58,319,000 annual contribution gets you a hospital bed on the general ward but covers more for pre-existing conditions, treatments outside Kenya, specifically India, diagnosis tests plus organ transplant operational costs. With UP insurance, a 58,055 annual contribution gets one an inpatient limit of 500,000, hospital bed in the general ward, covers pre-existing conditions worth 150,000 shillings, HIV and AIDS and related conditions for 200,000 shillings, 
cancer treatment at 250,000 shillings, organ transplant operation cost at 250,000 shillings, and post hospitalization at 15,000 shillings. However, with the same insurance, a 66,369 shillings will give you the same services but with more cost coverage. First of all, your cost of healthcare goes up when you go older. So, and your revenue, your, your, your income uh, at some point starts falling down, especially once you retire. Uh, the market targets a replacement ratio. At what you call when you retire, we, are, we have a number called income replacement ratio, which is 70%. But most people, when they retire, they don't reach that number. Most people are in the 40% region, which means the salary they're earning at retirement is about 40% of what they earn. So you can see somebody's salary has dropped significantly, but their health costs now are three, two to three times, you know, what they were. If people start saving at least five to ten thousand a month, at this uh, between thirty and forty, and keep that number consistent, then they'll be able to manage those costs, you know, when they're much older. So somebody can start paying fifty k. Uh, a bit of it goes to their current healthcare cost and a bit of it goes into the savings pot, which they can use. Now to our next story, apart from insurance, you can also do a few things every day to be healthy. One, eat healthy, get at least 30 minutes of physical activity, can be aerobics, taking a walk, anything to balance your muscles and strengthen your muscles. Also, do consultations with your doctors to check um, the state of your body and of your health. Also, get at least 7 to 8 hours of sleep, reach and maintain a healthy weight and also limit alcohol use or drink one to less but minimize as much drugs or prescription drugs or even alcohol as much as possible. Well, you are watching Mula Insider and remember to check out our website www.mula.co.ke for more stories and link with us on our social media pages. Coming up is another exciting episode of Pursuits. While you're watching Mula Insider now to our episode of Pursuits, when saving for retirement, rarely do we think about the medical aspect of it. Magdalene Karaoke shares her personal views on being financially prepared for retirement. Take a look. You need to run yourself like a company. My name is Magdalene Karaoke. I am an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and working as a public policy analyst and a government relations expert. Yes, I am currently saving for my retirement. I started a little over a year ago. Uh, what made me get into it in terms of saving at a personal level was the fact that coming from other jobs, largely from civil society, that was a benefit that I was receiving. But then once I transitioned out of that and went into practice, it was a benefit that I was no longer receiving. And um, with the realization of the transition that um, I wanted to make in my career, I figured this is something that then I need to put in place and um, start thinking about. Uh, to be honest, I have not actually been saving um, for healthcare uh, post work that is uh, for retirement life, that is because I actually hadn't thought about it. What I have been doing is, um, in addition to the insurance that is paid for by the company where I work, I have been, or rather I have a separate insurance that, you know, that I've been using since I was 18. So I figured that this is a company that hopefully <laughs> will stay with me even when I am in retirement. Yeah, so I usually do pay um, a premium every year um, just you know for the basic just the basic uh, minimum that i'm hoping that i will use until you know post retirement but i hadn't thought of it as a separate kitty or a separate fund that needs to be put aside a family is one disease away from poverty you know heaven forbid you have a sick relative someone close to you your parent gets ill a lot of us never think about the fact that probably they don't have that medical insurance or not really medical insurance, but they do not have, you know, a package um, set aside for that. So I'd say that even among my friends, this is not something that we've had a discussion about or really thought about. Yeah, I'm definitely scared. <laughs> I think now that um, the topic arises, 
um just looking at for instance what's the current cost of care even for instance for something as simple as a flu where you don't even have pre-existing conditions if i'm to go to a private health facility i'm spending about five six to seven thousand shillings just you know to go in so you've paid for consultation consultation will be at about maybe three thousand shillings um then you look at um, the cost of medicine and then you know and other facilitative costs for the care that you will receive and that is at a private institution if it is at government yes the amount will be a fraction but then if we were to consider now inflation the now the inflation that would arise as a result of you know time and then you also need to consider the risk factors that are there um, just in terms of you now the economy for sure the cost of care <laughs> now will not be the same as the cost of care 10 years from now, even let's not go that far. Let's even just look at two to five years from now. It's going to be very different. It's going to be very different. So those are things I think that it's a bigger conversation beyond myself. But I think other than that, just to introspect and then again now, you know, looking at it from a personal level, those are things that, you know, probably I need to have at the back of my mind as I plan for the future. Yeah. The other advice I'd have as a parting shot is the importance of having a strategic plan, a personal strategic plan. Companies, civil society, even government spends a lot of money. They invest a lot of resources in developing strategic plans to inform the direction as well as how they are going to raise money and how it's going to be expended. So why don't you have that for yourself? Well, Magdalene's story just shows us how you can, it's never too late or too early to prepare yourself for retirement, especially medical-wise. Well, let us take a look at our leading indicators this week, starting off with stocks and foreign exchange. Now let's take a look at the best prices of basic commodities this week across selected supermarkets. Well, that's all we had for you this week on Mula Insider. And remember to also check out our website www.mula.co.ke for more stories and link with us on our social media pages. My name is Masi Milanoi. See you next week. And remember, it's never too early or too late to prepare yourself for the future and even old age. See you next week.